You wanna know a game I like to play? Try to figure out how old Willy Wonka is. There are so many iterations of the character to the point where it becomes this weird twisting mystery that honestly makes my brain hurt. There are over a dozen individual versions of Wonka. These range from ones that look like cute cartoon characters to ones that look really old. These range from young dudes who literally don't even look like Willy Wonka to ones that look like bloodthirsty robots that want to destroy all of humanity because Nestle was a jerk and abandoned them. Bottom line though, the character is 58 going on 59 years old. Since the novel he appears in, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was published in 1964. The 1971 version is just above 50 years old, which makes sense considering Gene Wilder was in his 40s during his time working on the film. The 2005 version, aka the worst character redesign in history, wait, he's, he's a legal adult this year. Uh, th that honestly scares the crap out of me. But 18 years, I mean 18 years is a long time. For my fellow 2000s kids, I want you to consider just how much has changed in the past 18 years. Technology, tastes, trends, television, the past 18 years have been interesting. And I would know since I've been alive for like 20 years, but nearly 60 years is an even bigger accomplishment. And during the years that William Wonka has been alive, he's uh, been put through the ringer. And this especially applies to film. Willy Wonka has a reputation of being chewed and spat out mostly by Warner Brothers in film adaptations that usually fail in one way or another. The 1971 film? Now don't get me wrong. I and a lot of others adore the heck out of this film, and for good reason. It's memorable, the songs are awesome, Gene Wilder's performance is nothing sort of incredible, and as a film by itself it's really great. But as a book to film adaptation it absolutely sucks and blows. It's not a problem that severely drags down the film as a whole, but if you examine this problem by itself it becomes very glaring. This film, in multiple aspects, severely deviates from multiple areas of the book, even down to the overall plot, like the whole fizzy lifting drink fiasco and Slugworth turning from a minor character to a semi-major fake-out villain. Now, I can understand why they included this. The book's conflict essentially boiled down to emphasizing how poor the Bucket family is. For the 1971 film, the initial knowledge of Slugworth being a threat, and the fact that Charlie got swindled by Grandpa Joe and both of them broke the contract, does add some actual tension and conflict. But at the same time, it deviates so much from the book to the point where, in this context, it can just get head-scratching. And in 1971 Wonka's design, it does capture the elderly, happy-go-lucky spirit of Book Wonka, but at the same time, there are glaringly obvious differences from the book design, like the off-color of his trousers and hat and the lack of a goatee. This design of Wonka is a classic, and it does a good job of what it's supposed to do, but it deviates from the book design enough for it to just... Like, why? The 1971 film as a whole is a great film, but as an adaptation, it just falls flat. And the 2005 film? I'm going to cut to the chase. The 2005 film is one of the most tactless and insulting things I have ever seen in my life. First of all, let's address the elephant in the room. This adaptation remix of Waka and what is arguably the most glaring problem, his physical design. This design is so god-awful to the point where simply calling it bad or any synonym for bad would be severely understanding the issue here. Seriously, look at this version Wonka compared to Book Wonka. You people see the problem, right? It's not just me who thinks this redesign fails on every comprehensible level, and this version of Wonka has a major attitude problem. I know that so many people think it's enjoyable or funny, but the way he acts can just get uncalled for in a lot of situations. And yes, I know that Book Wonka could be a smart aleck and everything, but for 2005 Wonka, they took that trait and put it to the forefront. This man is supposed to be making products for children, and yet he hates children so much, to the point where he sees these kids going through severe physical trauma and he he just does not care. At least with Book Wonka, it felt like he gave a crap about these children, something that a person marketing towards children is supposed to do on some level. But no, we gotta make 2005 Wonka funny because it's a Tim Burton film and we gotta make everything edgy. And you know, honestly, I would summarize why giving 2005 Wonka a his dad is abusive backstory is bad even by concept, but I think the way I described it there in context with everything else I said summarizes why it's nothing but terrible. And before anyone gets mad, I don't hate John Depp himself. It's not Depp's fault that this version of Wonka turned out terrible. The blame here should be put on the direction it was given. So it was Tim Burton's fault. It's also Tim Burton's fault that this film turned out to be a massive bomb. I would go on, but the 2005 film is getting its own little video in this Wonka War series, as much as I don't want to make it. And I will reiterate what I said in my Willy Wonka tier list video. The 2005 film seriously deserves its own video describing why it sucks. The film may do a better job adapting from the book, but in the grand scheme of things, it's the one and only thing it's able to one-up the 1971 film at. The Tom and Jerry film? It has barely anything to do with its own source material or the original book. There is no justification for ranting about it in this video. At least it's still better than the disastrous 2005 flick.
And no, I'm not talking about the Timothy Chalamet film only because it hasn't even released yet. Oh, and I'm only mentioning this because I made a video covering it, but as for Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, that book gets so little recognition to the point where it might as well not even exist. Now, consider everything I just said. It seems as though we can't win. Every major Willy Wonka film fails at being an adaptation to the original book in one way or another. The 1971 film may be awesome, but it severely deviates from the source material in ways that leave me scratching my head. The 2005 film stays mostly faithful to the source material, but stunts and changes they pull are so bad to the point where it severely hurts any potential the film could have had. And the Tom and Jerry crossover and the Timothy Chalamet film are two additional films. They're technically Willy Wonka movies, so I do have to mention them. As for them being adaptations, do I even need to say it? I wouldn't blame you in assuming that none of the existing Wonka films do a genuinely good job at adapting from the book they stand on. Four films exist, and none of them can be competent in being both good films and as adaptations. That's where you're wrong, actually. Now, I know things look bleak in the Willy Wonka movie scene, and you'd be mistaken in thinking that there are four major Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movies. However, there are actually five. Who's the missing link here? The missing link is one little cartoon, more of a miniseries than anything, that manages to do the impossible. One petite form film that not only manages to be an actually good adaptation of the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory novel, but also manages to be a good film on its own. This film was made entirely in the quaint little country of Sweden, way back in 1983. The impossible film known as Kalle och Chocolade Fabriken. Okay, so you people more than likely have not the slightest clue as what I'm talking about. You more than likely never even knew this film existed. Heck, I myself never even knew this film existed until after I did my old Willy Wonka iceberg video. Oh my gosh, that video was old. That was over half an entire year of me being a Wonka fan. And I didn't even know about this film's existence. In fact, I actually stumbled across this film by pure accident, believe it or not. I was trying to look up pictures of this old Willy Wonka mascot costume that Nestle used during the early 2000s, specifically using Google's reverse image search function, and there was just an image of this weird dude in a top hat standing there with this amazing looking grin on his face, and I initially never thought anything of it. I thought it was just another screenshot of some random character in a top hat that barely had anything to do with Willy Wonka. Man, I could not have been any further from the truth. Now, this image just kept sticking out to me every time I saw it, and I have no idea why. Probably because he looked the most like a Willy Wonka character out of the countless other photos of random characters and top hats that kept showing up. Little did I know that this image was actually a screenshot from a real Willy Wonka film. With that established, I'm sure you're asking, what is this movie? Who is Kali and what in the frick is a chocolate fabrican? Well, Kali, specifically Kali Spans, is Charlie Bucket's name in Swedish, and Chocolate Fabrican is a chocolate factory, but this film's name is only like a fraction of its thorough weirdness. First of all, let's recognize the elephant in the room, the art style. Real wavery and surreal looking watercolor illustrations. And the character's facial expressions are exaggerated to the point of ludicrousness. It looks like a cursed Yoshi's Island, I love it so much. There's something about this art style that is so liminal, so strange and so unique that I just adore. I feel like part of it has to do with the fact that these were printed on actual paper. These feel like illustrations from a paperback book published in the 80s, which is actually the case. Since these illustrations were used in a publication of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Titan Publishing in 1980 or somewhere around that time. Bernd Arne Rudderstrom did the illustrations, and I just want to applaud this man so much, especially for the way he's able to convey expression and emotion in his characters. The whole watercolor, funny faces style is shared throughout most of his other works, and I just love this style so much. Back to him and Chocolate Fabrican, I just love the ways the characters express themselves in this film, especially Wonka. Like, you can't tell me that this dude is just the best. He makes the most amazing facial expressions I've ever seen coming from any character ever. Also, he's really short, which makes sense considering how he's described as little in the book. And I love how this art style just makes him look like a squishy, rubbery action figure. And Charlie just looks like this weird alternate universe version of 1971 Charlie. The film's visuals are literally just made up of Renostrom's illustrations that he made for a book. And keep in mind, this film is a book to film adaptation. Perfection. 
pure perfection. Now, who else worked on this film? Well, you'd be surprised to note that this film has a surprisingly limited cast. There's Willard Strom who did the illustrations and only about two or three other people who worked on this film, that we know of at least. Ernst Hugo Jagad provided the narration for this film, as well as the voices for literally every single character. Jagad is a pretty popular figure in Swedish film and literature culture from what I understand. He's also famous for reading children's books. There is Kalle Ukchoglad Fabrikan, but he's also done audiobooks for Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Peter and the Wolf. He's also played the villain in cult movie series Peter No Tail. Back to Chocolate Fabrican though, he provided all of the voice work. And it just amazes me how he's able to make every character sound unique. In fact, this film is literally just a slideshow of illustrations that are panned and zoomed and edited in timing with Jodgar just narrating over the original book. Again, perfection. As for miscellaneous cast members, Large Sulgin was the series producer, and we know of a Vivica Tunek. She's listed on the back of a VHS cover for both VHS releases of the film, and she actually composed the musical score for said film. From the information I can find, Chocolate Fabrican was part of a series where they did the exact same slideshow narrations of children's books. Chocolate Fabrican was part of this series, and the entire movie was actually a miniseries that consisted of 10 episodes that each consisted of around 20 minute segments, with the entire film clocking in at around 206 minutes. The film was produced and aired via Strugis Television, aka SVT. SVT was found founded in 1956 and is Sweden's main television broadcasting service. The film would also see its own VHS release. The VHS releases of this film are distributed by Carlton Home Entertainment Sweden AB, starting in 1996 and ending in 2002. The entire movie was split into two parts of the VHS release, likely due to tech limitations at the time. The first part on VHS was the first 111 minutes of the film, and the second release was the remaining 95 minutes. And this is honestly kind of stupid. You literally need to buy two tapes just to have the full film, like what? Now, with everything that I described, this film actually sounds great. It's a faithful film adaptation to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and if you ask me, it's the only faithful film adaptation to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Not only this, but it's a great film by itself, and it gives off really strange and liminal, surreal vibes. It's a version of Willy Wonka that feels very unique. It feels so nice and refreshing after having Gene Wilder been cloned nearly a dozen times. This film is the perfect Willy Wonka film. Now, I wanna watch the Squish Man. Where can I watch the Squish Man? Uh, here's the funny thing, actually. You can't watch this film. You literally cannot watch this film. I'm not joking. I mean, you can't watch this film in its entirety. There is really nothing stopping you from watching it, aside from the fact that this film is literally lost media. It's a movie that is widely inaccessible to the majority of the public. The film as a whole is lost. There isn't any place online or otherwise where you can watch this film. Unless you happen to be one of the astronomically few people who owns an astronomically rare VHS copy of the film. Now, this is the tale of the film in 2023 as of me uploading this. Back before 2018, this film was actually available not only on SBT's online archive, but also on freaking YouTube. Like, the entire thing. But even with this, you you can only watch Chocolate Fabrican on the SVT archive if you lived in Sweden. However, the tale only gets sadder after this time period. In late March of 2018, SVT removed all 10 episodes from their online archive. I mean, the page for it still exists, I guess, but it's entirely blank. And I can only assume that they removed the series from YouTube around the same time. And as far as I can tell, this film isn't available on any streaming platforms, Swedish or otherwise. Thankfully, however, not all of this film is lost. I mean, we don't have much, but I guess it's something? First and most importantly, we do have actual footage from this film, such as an intro and 10 minutes of everyone one in the Waka Vision room. We have full versions of the two VHS covers. We have a handful of screenshots, a lot of which showing Wonka making the best faces ever. I know I've mentioned it before, but I need to mention it again because it's this Wonka's best quality. He just makes the most awesome faces. We know all the credits that I've discussed and who composed the film, and that's about it actually. I do very vaguely remember seeing like this Swedish version of Spotify where it had like Jodgar's narration of the first three chapters, but that's it. But other than that, there is very little content from this film that is still up on the internet. 11 minutes guys, 11 and a half minutes, 206 total. You wanna know how much that encompasses? Do you really wanna know how astronomically- 5.5%! 5 and a half percent! Five and a half percent. Literally like 94% of actual footage from this film is lost. D do I need to explain why that's so bad? D do I- do I really? The fact that this film has lost media is bad, which leads into my next topic.
Allow me to contextualize Chocolate Fabrican with the rest of the Willy Wonka movies. First of all, what are Willy Wonka flicks supposed to do? Unless you're going the route of the 2023 film and making some kind of continuation or sequel, they're supposed to adapt from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now, in this context, I will say right now, Chocolate Fabrican instantly blows them all out of the water. I mean, really, you guys hear what I said about th what this film is, right? This film, an adaptation of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, is literally just a bunch of illustrations with some dude narrating over them. I don't need to explain why this alone makes this the best Charlie and the Chocolate Factory adaptation, right? You're taking illustrations from the source material and narrating the source material. This, on concept, is the best Willy Wonka film. It's like having a picture book read to you. This adaptation of a book is basically just the book, with more illustrations being read by some dude who's awesome at doing varied voices. Do I need to go on? Now, if you really want a good example at where this shines, look at the 10 minutes of surviving footage. We see everyone in the Wonka Vision Room. Now, in the book, the Wonka Vision Room is described as this long, narrow corridor that had lamps hanging from the ceiling. At one end of the room, there was this huge TV camera, and on the other side of the room, there was this black table with this huge TV, and the Oompa Loompas were wearing red spacesuits. In the cartoon, we see a near-perfect copy as to what's described. This long, white corridor with a TV camera and a huge TV set on a black table. And we see everything play out as described in the book. Mr. Wonka describes how TV works, and in Chocolate Fabrican he even uses his hat as an example. Mr. Wonka then discusses how he came up with the idea of television chocolate, and in Chocolate Fabrican we even see a bunch of little television chocolates fly across the screen. We see six Oompa Loompas carrying this huge bar of chocolate, and the TV teleports it, and Grandpa Joe specifically is in awe over it, in both the book and cartoon, and we hear Wonka yelling and getting all excited, eat Wonka's chocolates, they're the best in the world, if you don't believe us try one for yourself now. And the cartoon may be in Swedish, but you can follow along by the real excited tone in his voice. And yes, Jogod's voice acting is just that awesome. I mean, these 10 minutes alone can prove why Wonka's Swedish cartoon is the best out of all the Wonka films. But there are also little small parallels that are important to point out too. Like first and foremost with Wonka's design. Swedish Wonka's design is very faithful to book Wonka's design. We have the black top hat, the black goatee, the pearly gloves, the tailcoat, the gold-tipped cane, all of which are carryover from the book. The only two things they got wrong with Swedish Wonka are the color of his trousers and eyes. Bunk Wonka has bottle green trousers and it's detailed in the book that his eyes are a brilliant blue. However, Swedish Wonka has dark brown eyes and dark purple trousers. But in all honesty, these are very minor. That in the book is of English origin and they had to translate it to Swedish. And keep in mind, this is what's happening in the 80s. You need experienced humans to translate everything back then. I can imagine there might have been some mistranslation or misunderstanding with the colors. Also, Swedish Wonka has a flower on his top hat. That's actually something weird I've noticed. Swedish Wonka has this weird sort of flower-centered aesthetic. You can see it with his top hat and the Wonka bars in this film have like a golden flower pattern on the wrappers. I can't help but love the flower aesthetic for some reason, it just fits with Wonka's eccentric brand of craziness so much. And there's also the Oompa Loompas. Literally the only thing they change is the color of their hair. In the books it's blonde, but in the Swedish cartoon their hair is black. I'm not sure why, maybe it's to contrast with the light pastel colors they used for the backgrounds? Question mark? There are other examples, like in the still, where everyone is walking in the pink, warm hallways when they first enter the factory. Yeah, in the book, and as we see from a still in the Swedish cartoon, we get to see these hallways in all of their pink glory. And in another still, we see Charlie drinking some river chocolate offered by Wonka. Again, adapted perfectly from the book. We also get to see part of what I assume is the gum machine. We see the pipes, and there's also the still of Wonka tasting some goop while he looks like he's achieving transcendence. In the book, there's a bit in the inventing room where Wonka tastes some yellow stuff in a cauldron, so I assume that's what this cover is supposed to be representing, but the stuff on Wonka's finger here is brown, not yellow. I don't know, man. Also in one still, we get to see, I think, Wonka introducing himself for the first time. We see there's snow everywhere in the background, just like how in the book, the day of the contest, it took place on a snow day. And this is just coming from the content from the Swedish cartoon that we do have. Imagine how many more comparisons we can make if we had the actual full film. And that's probably the worst part about the Swedish cartoon. We don't have the full film. Yeah, one weird thing about Willy Wonka movies, their problems usually tend to hold some kind of funny irony to them. 
The 1971 film is great, but its biggest problem stems from the fact that it's supposed to be an adaptation of the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory book. As an adaptation, it just falls flat on its face. The 2005 film is a better adaptation per se, but oh gosh, that film sucks as a whole. And despite it being Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, most of the 2005 film's problem stems from just how abysmally bad Tim Burton wrecked Boca Wonka. With the Swedish cartoon, it doesn't even have anything to do with the film itself, but rather just the unfortunate circumstances surrounding it. Again, this film has largely lost media, and I know I might get some flack for saying this, but honestly, this film was doomed to become lost media straight from the get-go. This film was made exclusively in Sweden with a very little outside influence. Also, the VHS re-releases of Chocolate Fabrican are rare. Rare to the point where it's even rare that you find them in Sweden. You might find copies of it on sites like Tadaria if you're lucky, but again, it is still very, very rare. And all this is the worst part about the Swedish cartoon, the fact that you can't even watch the entire film in full. This movie, such an awesome and faithful representation of the book it's supposed to be standing on, in a world full of fail movie adaptations, this one is actually good, not only as an adaptation, but as a film by itself. It, the film gives off really strange liminal vibes. Maybe it's because of the art style or the fact that this film can only be watched on the totes aesthetic VHS, and it really adds to this film's charm. It really helped the Swedish cartoon form its own identity. That and Ernst Hugo Jalgad. He's awesome. I want you guys to really consider the 1971 and 2005 films for a minute here. Really think about them in context with the original book. Consider how just badly they butchered the book in multiple instances. And now, think about Kale Ok Choglad Fabrikin. How much of a breath of fresh air this cartoon must feel like in comparison. It's a standout good film in a world of subpar adaptations. Too bad we can't even watch it. Kalit Ok Choglad Fabrikin is probably the saddest piece of lost media I've ever seen. An actually good Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie adaptation. It sounds impossible, but it's real. It's real, but we can't watch it. It's lost media. And I hate saying this, but it's likely going to remain that way for a very, very long time. And another thing that bugs me, if you know about this cartoon's existence, then hearing people claim whether whatever adaptation of the book is the best, it starts to really grind your gears. Like, oh, the 2005 film is the best adaptation. No, no, it's not. The Swedish film is leaps and bounds better as an adaptation because the people behind it, most of which had actual experience in children's literature, mind you, actually gave two flying crabs about adapting from the book. It's a leaps and bounds better adaptation than most of the other crapshoots I've seen this franchise spit out. Kale Ok Chocolate Fabrican is the best Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, both by its own concept and as an actual finished film. And that's actually another really sad part about it. There will never be another Kale Ok Choglad Fabrican. There will never be another adaptation that will be as good as this, at least for a long while. Most other adaptations, they heavily stray away from the books in one way or another, as I highlighted in the beginning. This film, all they really do is just change Wonka's design a bit, in a way that's really small and not problematic. Everything else follows the book verbatim, and no other adaptation has been able to match it to a T like Chocolate Fabrican has. But what about the upcoming Netflix cartoon? I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. Don't get me wrong, I know that there are a lot of talented people working on that project, and I can respect that. But one thing is... Netflix. I very seriously doubt they're gonna be treating this with the love and care that it needs. I won't blame anyone who expects this movie to be an outright fail, but that's a topic for another day. Now, there is something else I want to address in this conclusion. Why in the world would such an awesome piece of Willy Wonka media essentially be wiped from existence? Well, we don't have a clear answer, and I honestly don't think we will ever get one. But if I had to take an educated guess, my best bet is that it had to do something with legal issues, maybe? This film aired exactly on November 15th, 1983, and it was removed off of the SBT Open Archive on March 31st, 2018, which is suspiciously close to the film's 35th anniversary. SBT's Open Archive launched sometime in 2013, I think, and initially had only around 300 titles, which has grown a lot in subsequent years. However, a lot of it is region blocked, meaning you can only access it if your IP address comes from Sweden. Even today, Lots of this site is rigged and blocked. However, I've read into SVT's website and some of their more legally centered pages, and I think I can come up with a non-definitive answer. 
First, I want to clean something up. SBT and Carlton Home Entertainment. I doubt that Carlton Home Entertainment is the reason for this cartoon's purging. Carlton Home Entertainment was involved, but they were only like distributed the VHS releases. They didn't actually produce it. My best guess is that SVT's rights to the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory IP expired so they legally couldn't have it up on their website anymore. But again, this is just a wild guess. This November, Kale Ok Chocolate Fabrican turns 40 years old, which, like this film or hate this film on concept, you, you have to agree, 40 years, that is impressive. I really do hope that for this film's 40th anniversary, they do something, even if it's small. Best case scenario, SVT will actually put the entire thing back on their archive. I mean, we'll only be able to watch it in Sweden, but uh, hey, at least it's somewhere. I want to end this video off on a positive note. Do I think this film will be found someday? Absolutely. Even if this film was purged from the SVT Open Archive, it's turning 40 years old this year, and, and as far as I can tell, SVT does care about all the programs and movies they have, and they do care about preserving them as long as they can. Who knows, maybe they'll celebrate the cartoon's 40th anniversary. And if they don't, it's more than likely because of legal reasons. And hey, the film still exists on VHS. I mean, it is very rare, but there is still a chance that someone will decide to be a hero and rip this film from VHS to, like, DVD and upload it somewhere. All we can really do though is cross our fingers and pray that someday, someday this awesome Willy Wonka movie will be found. 